Uh, hello, welcome. Uh, welcome back. Today we're going to continue on this uh, von Karman equation. Okay, so uh, let's let's just uh, continue. Now, um, let's uh, take a look at this uh, equation. And remember, we want to find this uh, shear stress. We want to find this uh, wall shear stress uh, based on this uh, pressure gradient. Mm. And of course, these are the terms as well, which are momentum terms. And basically, um, it was all derived from a force balance uh, kind of a thing. So, um, of course, this, this will probably be, you know, uh, within the boundary layer, what's the momentum? Yeah, what's the momentum uh, transfer? But uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's a little abstract. It's very hard to see which term actually contributes to what. But um, yeah, this one was all based on force balance. Okay, now now that we have that, um, second thing uh, is how do we then use this to solve an equation? All right, um, for our normal flat plate boundary layer flow, we always like to assume for the simplest case that there's no pressure gradient. dp dx equals to zero, and then we just solve this equation like so. However, um, uh, the usefulness of this uh, von Karman equation is that it, it doesn't have to just uh, uh, apply to a flat plate case. It can apply to somewhat more general cases where there is some pressure gradient. Because uh, if you have no pressure gradient, you might as well, add, and if you have a no pressure gradient and a flat plate flow, you might as well use the similarity solution. A uh, von Karman was kind of invented to make to for a more generalized analysis because. Uh, when fluid flows over something, it's not always a flat plate. So, for example, I mean, take the case of a wing, right? A wing, a wing is a close, very close thing to this flat plate flow, a uh, flat plate flow, and a wing is also called aerofoil. Aerofoil, and uh, this this is not definitely not going to be a flat plate. It's going to be slightly curved. Um, and then if you take a look at the the surfaces here, the normal to the surface, you know, you'll know, you notice that it, there's a slight bend to it. Of course, there'll be some free stream velocity because the, the plane is actually moving pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, it's not a flat plate. So how then do you sort, sort these kind of things out? So this von Karman equation is for that. Okay, So we don't want to make too many uh, assumptions first. Okay, uh, Assumptions about what delta P is, what how u infinity actually changes okay so we, we kind of keep all of this inside uh, uh, inside the uh, del by del x so um, the only assumption I would say we make the only assumption is that u infinity doesn't change with y u infinity oh my infinity equals to constant okay with respect to y that's the only assumption that we make there's no other assumption yet so uh in a more general case you kind of uh, don't want to cancel this dp dx term off so you want to kind of keep it okay so so that you can apply the von karman solution in case there is a pressure gradient Okay, so how do we find out this dp dx? Okay, dp dx. Uh, well, let let's let's take a look at a at a situation where there's a pressure gradient. Okay, a free a free stream flow across maybe this airfoil, right? This airfoil. Yeah. For um, if there's an adverse pressure gradient, if there's an adverse pressure gradient, means uh, dp dx is more than zero adverse pressure gradient why is it called adverse pressure gradient because the pressure here is low and the pressure here is high so dp dx is more than zero so the pressure will exert a force on the fluid that's acting to the left so essentially when a fluid flows through this adverse pressure gradient a free stream fluid flow um, Either there'll be some like compression going on or uh, 
somewhat this 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 uh this kinetic energy has to go somewhere okay so uh one one case that it may happen is that uh it's not a maybe uh, there's a fluid flow over a sphere u infinity and then here will you'll have a stagnation point right uh, so as fluid flows uh, flows towards the sphere, it will get diverted around the sphere. But uh, at this point, u x equals to zero. U x equals to zero, and here is a point of high pressure. So it's a point of high pressure. So when fluid is flowing against a point of high pressure, it's as if there is some sort of force trying to stop the fluid from flowing. So this is called adverse pressure gradient. Of course, if uh, if it's the other way around, dp dx less than zero, that means it's a favorable pressure gradient. Okay, so you're adding energy into the fluid as it goes along. That that's the rough idea. I'm not I'm not doing the whole conservation equations, but it's just to give you some idea of what what you can expect or what uh, adverse pressure gradient is. Okay, so. In this case, dp dx is more than zero for adverse pressure gradient. What then are the equations that you can use? Okay, so um, one thing we assume about uh, this fluid flow is uh, inviscid. Okay, inviscid. That means the viscous forces, uh, viscous forces approach zero. Okay, so when there's inviscid flow, um, all your viscous terms drop out. And I won't derive, but you can say this, eh? dp dx equals to u infinity rho and du dx, partial u, partial x. Ah, shucks. So in adverse pressure gradient, what it's saying is that the, the x momentum will change over time. Right? Your x momentum will change over time in accordance with the pressure. Okay, so as pressure in the pressure gradient increases, the uh, u velocity will also change. With uh, u velocity will also change with uh, um, as you increase x. So this is a uh, known as Bernoulli's equation because there is no viscous forces there. There are no viscous forces there. So let's let's write this down. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not going to derive this. But let's write this down. Partial p partial x equals to delta. Oh no 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 delta here. Uh, rho u infinity fraction partial u infinity partial x. And the assumption we can assume this holds with or without flat plate. Okay, so when there's a pressure gradient, it is not due to the flat plate that there's a pressure gradient, but um, yeah, uh, we assume that the pressure gradient due to the flat plate is kind of negligible. We can just ignore that contribution. We can say it's more due to the overall pressure gradient that we are imposing on the fluid. Okay. Okay, so the, the other terms that are, I mean, the flat plate will of course exert some sort of pressure on the fluid because of the tau x over here. But, uh, I mean, um, how do you say? Yeah, the, the flat plate will exert a force on the fluid, but that's already accounted for by this tau x. So, excuse me just now, I think maybe, yeah, I got my ideas wrong. So, yeah, the, the flat plate. Uh, force on the fluid has already been accounted for using this wall shear stress and this pressure gradient is strictly due to um, yeah, strictly due to the uh, pressure gradient across the whole fluid okay is the external pressure gradient so this this is how uh, Bernoulli's equation comes about okay so uh, if we since we like don't really know the pressure gradient uh, or what we I mean, we can of course impose it, impose a pressure gradient condition. But if we not, if we are not sure about the pressure gradient, all we want, uh, we only know how the free stream velocity changes over x. Then we can just make this substitution here. Okay, we just make this substitution here. 
Okay, substitute back in. So this is uh, how von Karman would do it. Uh, okay, he will just basically copy and paste this whole thing here, essentially. Okay. And um, of course, for incompressible fluids, uh, you can just um, divide throughout by rho density. You can divide throughout by density. It's a constant, constant, uh, uh, constant density fluid. You can do this uh, if there's like incompressible flow, like supersonic flow. All this you cannot make this assumption. Okay, but uh, for most heat transfer cases, uh, if you are using incompressible fluid, that's usually the case. Then yes, you can do this kind of thing. Tau x over rho, and then I'll, I'll get this tau x out. Okay, that leaves us with slightly less to deal with later on. Okay, constant density fluid or incompressible flow. Right, so um, now the idea, the next thing you want to do is to actually combine all these integral terms with this differential term. Question is how? Okay, we, we notice that this differential term is kind of a, a del by del x kind of a form. Yes, so that's good. Uh, we also notice that there's a boundary layer thickness delta p here. Momentum boundary layer thickness. So it's like, what, what are we supposed to do with this? Okay, so we'll need to tidy up all of this. We'll need to tidy all this up. All right. We'll need to tidy all of this up. And how, how do we tidy all of this up? Uh, we make an, uh, we just try to, we, we note the form of the equations here. You notice this thing is the del by del x of u squared. And this thing is a del by del x of u infinity uh, and u, right? Yeah. Del by del x of u infinity and u. All right, uh, so, how do we how do we then include? Uh, one one useful thing to do to uh, take note of is uh, the product rule. Okay, product rule. So there are two tricks you use. One is the product rule, and the other trick is to deal with this boundary layer thickness. To use to tidy up equation. So there are two tricks we need to use. One's the product rule. So let's let's write the product rule thing down. Okay, so, um, well, let's see. So let's have a d by dx, okay? I mean, product rule in general. Okay, u infinity square delta p equals to, all right, so uh, the product rule is just, uh, yeah, we, in the original derivative, if this is one of the terms, right? If this is one of the one of the terms in the in the product rule expansion, maybe this will be the original term. So we'll need to expand out into this, which is um, I won't I won't use the partial term here. I mean, if it's partial or not, hmm, don't matter that much i mean the dy's are like dealt with separately okay ah, maybe maybe i'll just do partial just to avoid confusion partial okay So the other thing is, uh, yeah, we'll need to add the other term. So one is the u infinity term. Then the other term is, I mean, u infinity. Okay. Fraction partial by partial x of u infinity into delta p. All right. So I mean, it's pretty simple. Okay, 
So we cannot substitute. We can substitute all of this in. Okay, and not only that. There's there's one more thing. Eh? Uh, we are we assume that uh, u infinity is constant with respect to y. So uh, what does that mean? Over this f four, if this is a fixed y coordinate, u infinity here and u infinity here should be the same. Okay, that's a simplifying assumption. So u infinity is constant with y. So if u infinity is constant with y, we can note that delta p equals to integral of 0 to delta p dy. Okay, let's just put 1 dy. Yeah, this is 1 dy, okay? Or just integral of dy. It's uh, pretty much the same thing. We just don't put the 1 there for the sake of uh, conciseness. So why am I doing this? I, I want to make all of this look a little bit more like uh, all of this over here on the uh, right hand side. Okay, so that's what I that's my goal. So um, so noting that this is the case, um, we can do the following, yeah. So let's do the integral dy with uh, respect to all everything, yeah, because. And now the thing is that since u infinity is constant with y, we can put the integral anywhere we like. Yeah, we can switch the order of the integrals, and we can put it anywhere we like. A with respect to y, of course. Yeah, when you have a uh, with respect to x, is a little bit more difficult. Okay, so now now we have somewhat uh, a form resembling resembling this uh, right hand side thing here now if you notice uh, if you notice uh, this this thing on the uh, on the right hand side uh, yeah we, we can actually combine some terms later on okay so um, why not why not we just substitute everything back in first so this is these are two tricks to help us so substitute uh, substitute back in and what do we have all right we substitute all of this back in and there we go now we have a long mess of things there oh dear it's very long okay not that bad uh, we will need to get rid of course of this this part which is kind of not relevant except for the minus sign and you know the trouble with minus signs is that careless mistakes tend to abound when minus signs abound uh, but that's life you know math life engineer life <laughs> okay let's let's try let's uh, start trying to um, compare some terms here Okay, we, we can actually start trying to compare some terms. Um, let's see. Yeah, we can bring this partial by partial x out. Okay. Ah, okay, it, it seems that uh, I've uh, made a careless mistake again. So, um, this, this term here, yeah, I, I, should be, I should be using this, this uh, little term over here. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let me explain myself again. Uh, this delta p here, I should be replacing by this integral dp. And uh, what I want to replace is this term. Yeah, I just made a wrong substitution. I want to replace this term, but instead I've uh copied and pasted all of this on the right hand side. So let me uh just tidy up, make this a subject. Make this term here. This term is the is this term. They are the same. Make this turn the subject, and let's see what happens. Okay, so this is equal to uh, this whole thing, this uh, main integral thing over here, minus this term. And now I can... Uh, just put 
everything together here. Well, this should be about right. And uh, of course, uh, we said that uh, u infinity doesn't change with y, so we can just uh, bring it in. And why is there a row over here? I, just, I thought I cancelled that out. Okay, let me, let me do the constant density fluid. Yeah. Okay, now well, that should be about right. Okay. Mm. And then I want to combine this term with this term. Ah. Or rather, uh, this term with this term. It is... Uh, ah, whatever. Okay, let me, let me combine these two terms first. Okay, this u infinity, which I can just bring to the inside of the integral, nothing, nothing wrong. Um, and then we, we add it to the right hand side, just to tidy things up. It's just this is just tidying up the equation, nothing more than that. So let's uh, so I have a u squared plus u infinity squared dy on the right hand side. And that's the that's the whole reason I was doing this uh, very messy, uh, yeah, this integral thing, so I can combine some integrals together, and then it looks nice. Okay, just just cause it looks nice. That's all. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, let let's uh, see how this equation this one can be dealt with. We note that um, these two can sort of actually combine into into one. Okay, it almost it almost looks like a you can do another product rule thing here. Okay, so po possibly in the next video we we will uh, look more into simplifying all of this down, and we'll try and simplify all of this down, uh, so that yeah, so that uh, we can. Uh, what say, say what say what am I just trying to say? Yeah, so that we can uh tidy this down and then we'll get our von Kármán expression. Okay? So I'll see you next time. Bye bye.